How did you stumble across it, or were you looking for it? Well, we are, yes, we are actively looking for more of those giant viruses. You know, in the last decade, we found uh, three more families of those viruses, and so we are actively looking for them because we believe that they might be a clue to uh, understanding the origin of life on the planet, in fact. And uh, this was found in Siberia, deep this underground? One, yes, this one was found in Siberia. And how do you know its age? How can you calculate its age? Okay, so we are collaborating with a uh, world leader in those, in those areas, which is a Russian group in, uh, in Pushino and uh, near Moscow. And uh, those people have been working on the, on the microbiology of permafrost for about 30 years. And all those layers have been radiocarbon dated uh, very precisely. And so we know exactly where we are sampling things. And uh, those, uh, there's a, lo a long you know, history of, of this kind of research in, in the area. So how is it that it can be dormant for such a long time, effectively go into hibernation and then spring back to life. Well, you know, uh, permafrost by definition is, is frozen, but this is not ice. This is a, a very nice uh, preserving a matter that is like make like a humus, like some kind of a peat type. Yes. Wood. So it's very dark. It's neutral. There is no light. It's very cold, of course. And so uh, it's a very w good thing to, to preserve a, any, a, any uh, traces of life like DNA or, or bacteria or viruses. And so the same group actually uh, about two years ago where I had showed that it could revive a plant. Uh, from the same age, basically. So when we uh, looked at that paper, we said, well, uh, what the heck, we could try to find if a virus could survive that long, and that was what, what happened. In fact. Well, d describe the virus as best, as best you can. Well, uh, we are only interested in those, those new kind of viruses that uh, emerged about, you know, 10 years ago. I mean, that we discovered 10 years ago, you know, there are, there are very large viruses. Uh, it's an oxymoron for viruses. Normally, viruses are very small. So we are looking at viruses that are the size of a bacteria, you know, more than one, one, mic one micron in size. They usually have a huge uh, genome, so a large number of genes. And so they are very uh, abnormal in that respect. So this is our special interest is to look for those and to look for more of those. So this is something that has been going on for about 10 years now. And so uh, we just look for them everywhere and we use a very special bait uh, that those are some kind of a laboratory amoeba which uh, get infected by those viruses. So this is a very safe way to look for viruses because those guys, by definition, are not going to be infectious for anything but amoebas, which are single cell organisms. So this is a very safe way because, because of course, you are not going to look for you know, smallpox virus or, or, or very dangerous virus to try to revive them. Uh, just for fun. So this is uh, our approach to the problem. You talked at the beginning about how your research uh, feeds into the study of the origins of the Earth. Yes. Uh, what are you learning from these old viruses? Well, you know, uh, uh, what, what happened is that for, for a long time, you know, viruses were the very simple theory for viruses that were just, you know, a little, uh, little piece of, uh, of cells or whatever. But uh, it seems now that, you know, when we find more and more of those giant viruses, they seem to point uh, towards uh, some kind of a multiple origin of life rather than only a single one because uh, they are made of totally different genetic material in a way. And so we really wonder where that is coming from. We don't see any trace of, you know, common history between those viruses and regular or life, I would say.